Hi, everybody. This is Jack Benedict, and welcome to the Coach Paul Tortorello Show as we talk IUP Crimson Hawks football and what a game it was at homecoming and Cold Bowl on Saturday, 17-6 to win over the Vulcans. Coach, first of all, uh, let's, uh, you, how could you ever imagine uh, 23 points total with two teams going in that almost scored 100 points a game? Could you ever figure a game like that? You never well, know, do you? When we went in and it was 3 nothing at halftime, I, I kind of talked to a couple of coaches and said, Never thought it was going to be like this at halftime. But, uh, you know, we, we had some chances on offense that we let slip away, uh, dropped the ball down there inside the 15, uh, had the field goal block. So, you know, there's two opportunities right there. We had a play, took us down to the 30. We had an illegal formation, took another drive away from us. And then, uh, you know, they had missed a field goal. So, uh, you know, some opportunities uh, – we had offensively, we let slip away, but we knew, you know, second half we would get it back and uh, have more opportunities, and that's the way we thought at halftime. Yeah. The illegal formation calls uh, can be touchy, can't they? I mean, that's hard to figure sometimes. Yeah. Well, there were two of them. The one we understood, they called the tackle back in his stance, and, you know, they call that not a lot, but they called it. and. It wasn't that bad, but I, we understood that. But the play to Langdon that we get down on the 25-yard line, first and 10, we're still trying to figure out who the penalty's on after you look at the video because everybody's legal. So, uh, But those things happen. We just had to be resilient and overcome it. And we, we've, we actually did feel okay at halftime. We, we knew we were moving the ball. We just didn't have the ball a lot in the first half because defensively we weren't giving up points, but you know we were letting our offense stay on the field too long. So mm -hmm. we figured we were getting a kick for the second half. We were going to get the ball to start the second half. We'd get more opportunities, and uh, we thought we'd be able, just like the week before at Marcy Hearts, we'd be able to take the game over in the second half. Mm -hmm. And you did. And one of the things that was noticeable in this game, I think, compared to last year when you played down there, was the fact last year you couldn't get any pressure on – Noah Mitchell. Boy, that wasn't the case this year. You had him scurrying. Uh, 95 yards is the worst of his career. Four sacks. I, I mean, he really did the job. Yeah, and, and not only the four sacks, but there were probably six or seven other hits we had on him right when he threw the ball. He had to, you know, a guy was going to be coming wide open, but he couldn't wait for him. Uh, I, I thought our pressure was, was huge. You know, like you say, 95 yards passing, we were covering him pretty well. But there were times where guys were coming open late and he just didn't have, have time to get the ball to him. So we won a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles. Uh, we did blitz a little bit. And a couple times he got the ball out, but he, he took a couple big hits on those blitzes. So uh, I thought the pressure uh, that we had on him was huge. You had uh, not only the pressure, but uh, hurries are important, as we said. Too. Right. Uh, big plays, big fourth down play, 355 left. Uh, the sacks were timely. You can get sacks, but if they're timely, right. opportunistic, and that's what happened. Right. And then there's a couple times we just got them covered for, you know, a couple of sacks were covered sacks. He held the ball very long, waiting for a guy to come open. He didn't come open, and then we, we did a good job. You know, in the first half, he came out the middle a little bit on a scr couple scrambles that hurt us. We fixed that and made him go outside, and we ran him down a couple times. So, uh, all in all, you know, the first half we probably gave up, you know, too many yards and didn't get off the field a couple times. One time we got called for defensive holding. Another time we let them get out of a second and 17 situation. But uh, we did play great in the red zone. You know, they were in the red zone three times and they only had one field goal. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the players that uh, that scored big for you, you know, as far as when you reviewed the video. Right. We can talk about Dwayne Brown. We can talk about JoJo Goss just right. had the best game of his career. Correct. Uh, they really came up big time for you, didn't they? Yeah, one-on-one -on -one battles outside. You know, JoJo won four or five of them. Guy draped all over them. Uh, we hit the long pass. We caught big guy on little guy, 50-50 ball. We had the big guy. They had the little guy. Uh, that got us down to the five-yard line. And then Dwayne uh, won a couple one-on-one -on -one battles. Obviously, the last touchdown was one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Quentin does a great job in those one-on-one -on -one situations, those 50-50 balls giving us a chance to make the play on. And on the last touchdown, he got hit right in the mouth as soon as he threw it. Uh, and there were some unsung guys. Malik Anderson played a great game when Evans went down. Uh, Q Carter, you know, we throw the interception, it's going to be a touchdown. He runs all the way as he went out for a pass. He had to save a touchdown down on a 15-yard line, or they're going to score a touchdown there like Mercyhurst 
with Quentin on the tackle. Uh, Quentin missed the tackle this time, and Q Carter runs him down, and we, we, we hold him to a field goal to make it 7-6 there instead of them taking the momentum with a touchdown. Sure. I thought that was the, the turning point in the game. We had the turnover. They had it first and 10 on our 15. We were up 7-3. They had all the momentum. We stopped it right there and forced the field goal and got the momentum back. And then from that point on, I think we looked at it. The field goal was the beginning of the fourth quarter. I think we had 200 yards in the fourth quarter, and they only had 36 yards in the fourth quarter. They only ran like seven plays in the fourth quarter, and we ran 25 plays. So mm -hmm. from the point of the adversity with the interception, that's really when we took the game over. Uh, from that point on in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you know, uh, in, in looking at the, the last couple of games, you're becoming uh, a strong second-half team. Right. And if you want to be strong, second half is the place to be, right? Well, our, our motto and our philosophy is if you're going to get in close games, you're going to have to win the fourth quarter to win the game. Very rarely are you going to be in a close game, win the fourth quarter, and not win the game. Mm. So I thought uh, our fourth quarter couldn't have been any better. Uh, we outscored them 10 to 3, but really the 3 was the first play of the fourth quarter. It didn't have anything to do with the quarter. They kicked the field goal in the first play of the fourth quarter, so it was really 10 0. We outscored them in the fourth quarter, and we dominated it. I mean, we had two long drives. Then we had the ball with three minutes to go, and we ran it down to 14 seconds. Uh, they had uh, a four and out where they went for it, and a three and out. Uh, for their two possessions. So uh, we really did take over the fourth quarter, and yeah. in close games you have to do that. Let me go to uh, the defensive side, and we'll go from the veterans in, in Lloyd, Damon Lloyd, who's he just, you know, he went over 300 tackles in his career now, he's, you know, with the best of them. Tillman, uh, I mean, he put pressure on right. Mitchell all day long. And then on the other side, you had your true freshman right. in, in Javante Haynes played a great game for you. So, you know, you've got it from the freshman to the veterans. Well, yeah, they, you know, Tillman one-on-one, -on -one, their left tackle was really struggling with him. And uh, so we, we had a big advantage there and it showed. The first play after the interception, uh, first and 10, they tried to throw the ball and they, they were, you know, Tillman ruined the whole play. I mean, the guy was coming open, but he couldn't throw the ball on time. And then uh, they ran the ball on second down, and we stopped them. And then on uh, third down, we, we, we covered them pretty well. So, But the, the mismatch we had was Tillman on their left tackle. Damon Lloyd was making a lot of plays all over the field, as was Ian Mandola. And then they, they kind of went after Haynes, you know, to their second receiver in the slot. They probably thought that that was their mismatch. And he had three or four pass breakups. Uh, uh, he came on a blitz one time, and Mitchell just got the throw off, and he, he really tagged the quarterback. Uh, so. Uh, we were really happy with the true freshmen and then the veterans. You, you know, when you get in these games against Cal and Slippery Rock and in playoff games, et cetera, et cetera, your great players have to play great. And defensively, you know, probably our three best players, Tillman, uh, Lloyd, and Amendola, played very well. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, let's talk about the game this week, Slippery Rock, homecoming up there, uh, 2 o'clock kickoff at the Rock, rivalry game. Two undefeated teams, two nationally ranked teams, and not much more, you know, you can say about it. But, uh, uh, you know, they've been a force this year, no question. And, you know, break it down a little bit for us, led by their quarterback, Roland Rivers, who's just, just a terrific player. Well, Rivers, I mean, statistically, they, they, they got Star War numbers on offense. I mean, they're just, they haven't scored less than 40 any, any week this year. Uh, they throw it, they run it. Rivers is a threat running the ball just as much as he is throwing it. They've got their two best receivers back from last year, and Litwin and then Win in the slot is he's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, great speed guy. Uh, you know they lost Hills at running back, but they have two running backs that they're they brought in as transfers that are getting the job done for them. And then with Rivers' ability to run the ball, that's their running game. Uh, they'll throw the ball down the field. They'll spread you out. Uh, nobody has stopped them offensively. They, they I. I I can't quite remember how many times they've punted this year, but I think you could maybe count on one hand I how many times. I think it was around nine. Yeah, maybe? so if you play five games, that's less than two punts a game. And then you, you get a couple of the punts late in the game when they got their backups in there. But we looked at it when they've had their first team offense in. We think they've only been stopped four times in five games to, to punt the ball. Mm -hmm. They haven't turned it over. They only have three turnovers. Uh, so... Uh, you know, they're, they're going to be a handful on offense. Defensively, they have their whole defense back. They got everybody back from last year. Uh, every starter that started last year against us is back. 
Uh, they're, you know, they're playing with a lead a lot, and their defense is playing well. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough task to go up there and, and, and beat them up there, but uh, we'll show up. I, I think maybe you will. Uh, I'm going to give you two stats here. But one fumble they have on the air, but on the other hand, they have 65 penalties compared to their opposition, 43. Now, I don't know how that comes about, maybe because the games get out of control, who knows. But uh, just looking at it statistically, which when you look at a game like this, you can pretty much say forget it and just go out and play. Right. I mean, you know, statistically speaking, the last couple years, and you know, really like the last 10 years, both Slippery Rock and IUP have probably led the conference in, in penalties. Yeah. Now, part of that is a, a little bit of a discipline problem, at least on our end. But, you know, when you're aggressive and you're physical and you play fast and, and you're, you're, you know, your philosophy is you got to be physical to win, sometimes you, you'll, you'll get some penalties just on that alone. And, and right. you know, but... Uh, aggressive. Very aggressive. Both, both offense and defense for them and both offense and defense for us are very aggressive. And sometimes that leads to more penalties. Now, we had 11 penalties on Saturday. Uh, and, you know, more so on offense. We had two procedures. We had two uh, illegal formations. We had three holding penalties that really hurt us. You, you know, when you get a penalty on offense and it's a hold and it's a 10-yard penalty, well, it really isn't because the play we ran gained 15 yards, so it's a 25-yard penalty. The other hold, we gained 14 yards, so it's a 24-yard penalty. Mm -hmm. Then the hold at the end, when we, were, we probably went, went in and scored at the, near the end there, we had a long run down to the 20-yard line. We got hold, got Dauberman got called for holding, pulling out on the perimeter. So that play cost us about 30 yards. So when you look at it, you know, a 10-yard holding penalty is really not 10 yards when you run a play. The one hold we got in the pass game hurt us in regards to it was an incomplete pass, but it made a first and 20, and we threw a pick the very next play because we were behind the chains. So, you know, from an offensive standpoint, you know, the penalties really killed us Saturday. If we If we – can stay away from the penalties and, and not turn the ball over. Uh, we're much like Slipper Rock, and we haven't punted a whole lot. So if we're not getting penalties and we're not turning the ball over, you know, we're tough to stop offensively. Mm -hmm. Well, that's indicated by the numbers and the 5-0 and record. How do you keep the perspective for your players going into a big game like this and being on the road with it? Well, I think the thing, you know, you, you do have to explain it is just one game. Okay, and you know, it's not really a do or die game. Uh, the team that loses is still going to be in the hunt. Uh, you know, especially, you know, they still have to play Cal. We played Cal. Uh, obviously, the team that wins is going to have the upper hand, but, uh, you, you know, it's, it doesn't count. You, you win the game, it's not like you win three games. Right. And there's still a lot of the see. This isn't the last game of the year where it's a do or die situation, but. You know, it, it's kind of six one way, half dozen the other. The players understand that right now, that, you know, both teams are 5-0, and oh, and it's a big football game. And two years ago, it was the same scenario. We won the game, and, you know, we went on to do some great things, and their season kind of went the other way after that. Uh, last year, we both came into the game with one loss. They won the game, and their season took off. They went to, to the regional final, and we obviously didn't even make the playoffs. Right. So if you sit there and you just look at what's happened the last couple of years, this game's been crucial in how teams have played after the game. After. So, you know, if you win it, that's great. And, you, you, you know, you move on, and you, you, you got a lot of momentum. But I think you got to understand is if you're not fortunate enough to win it, you still got a lot to play for. So there, there's a fine line in, in looking at that. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, we hope we get some fans up there. It's a short trip. I think we will. Everybody knows the tradition of IUP Slippery Rock. It's interesting. You're a Slippery Rock grad. So is our athletic director, Todd Garzarelli, who played up there. But I think I know who you guys are rooting for. Well, <laughs> you know, it's been a great rivalry. Yes. Uh, we've had a lot of great games. You know, their coaches, their head coach, they've been there a long time. Obviously, myself and a couple of our assistants have been here a long That's time. True. So we've been coaching against each other for 25 years. Our players continually play against each other every four-year uh, run, you know, every, every cycle of four years. You know, we have a lot of guys, this is the fourth year they've played against Slippery Rock, and a lot of their guys, this is the fourth year they've played against IUP. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great game. I think the thing, the point that was made was uh, 
the team that has won this game has really used it and, and catapulted their season on to bigger and better things. So in that respect, it's probably a bigger game than, than, you, than it really actually is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you also got to take uh, a look at it that if, if you are not fortunate enough to win it, there's still a lot of the season left. Mm -hmm. you have one other thing I did want to bring up, you had mentioned to me, you said there was one of your young players, I mean a true freshman, when, before you were playing Cal, he said, Oh, Cal, is it, is it, you know, is this supposed to be a big game? Or I mean, I have no idea. It was, to him, it was another football well, game. Well, yeah, and those young guys don't know. Yeah. I mean, they won't have the slightest idea what, what they're getting into this week when we go up to Slippery Rock and the parking lot's packed and they're tailgating and our bus is having trouble even getting to the locker room of the stadium. They're not letting us get up the hill, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> They'll be, their, their eyes will get widened a little bit, but uh, once, once we're out there on the field, none of that stuff really matters. No, not at all. We're looking forward to it. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Coach Tortorella, 2 o'clock for the kickoff at Slippery Rock, and of course we'll have all the TV and radio coverage for you. And be on hand for uh, what should be another great matchup. For Coach Tortorella, this is Jack Benedict. Have a nice evening.